Yeah. This is off white cinematic. This is off white cinematic. Yo, you got to have it. It's cinematic. Yo, this is off white cinematic. Yo, you got to have it. It's cinematic. Yo, this is off white cinematic. Yo, you got to have it. It's cinematic. Yo, this is off white cinematic. Yo, you got to have a high. As I do it start to finish. As I just do it till you diminish. Yeah, I bring the invisibility. When I just bring the hostility. Ha, I be the hostile neighbor. Here to just do you a favor. Here to put you in the mode. As I just proclaim myself as the goat. Just sink your boat. Every single time I drop in the load. Yo, I'm here to unload and explode. To make your whole operation implode. Mr. O double just light up the LED diode to indicate, reverberate, and just here to celebrate. That's how I bring my own celebration when I'm just giving you concentration. Yo, I'm deep in it, Mr. O double just in it to win it. Yeah, I just cruise down the river. Yo, I just spit when I deliver. Mr. O double just make you quiver. Pull another arrow at the quiver. Because I'm so precise with it When I'm just a- getting so nasty with it I just get to the nitty gritty Represent suburban to the city As I just cut through the demographics Cut through all the plastics Mr. O-Double just put it down No matter how drastic No matter how dramatic No matter how complex it gets I'm just here to make you have no regrets September 11th, I never forget what I'm a living memorial That's how I do it when I'm imploring you Just bust through the portal to another dimension To dementia As I'm just sitting here Sending you all the way back to Eternia What's up everyone? Yours truly Off-White here Welcome to Off-White Cinematic Season 2 Episode 7 And today we will be discussing my comic book collection. So, get your seatbelt strapped on and uh, let's get a little, little group energy going as we talk about these comics. Thank you for joining us. Thanks again to everyone for joining us. Shoutouts to the off-white cinematic dancer, Ray Dawn. Follow her on Instagram at raydawn1300. And if you would like to be featured dancing while I freestyle during my intro, please be 18 years or over and send me an email at ryan at menugem.com. And I want to tell you about Menugem. It's my online ordering platform. I programmed it myself over the past 12 years. So go check it out at menugem.com. You can rate every item in your order, collect gems, and move up in the rankings. We are used by several restaurants in Chicago, so go check it out and support Illinois businesses. In my youth, I mostly collected baseball cards. After I finished collecting baseball cards, I started collecting comic books. I only really collected comics from about 1990 to 1993. I've only just recently started collecting again. But during those early years, I do remember talking with my junior high and high school classmates about the characters and about the story arcs that were going on at the time, such as the Infinity Gauntlet. Also, in the comic book scene at the time, when I first got into comics, my favorite comic artist, Jim Lee, was taking on his own reboot of the X-Men. The New Mutants were just transitioning into becoming X-Force, and in the DC Universe, we were going through the Death of Superman story arc. The person who got me into comics was a friend of mine from Rochester Middle School named Byron Jones. Byron was my first friend at Rochester, and we used to climb the banks of the creek near his house. In seventh grade, Byron gave me New Mutants comics, and we'll look at those in this video. Of course, I am enjoying the explosion of comic book movies that are being released now, especially since today's movies are retracing some of those classic story arcs. Between DC and Marvel, I am partial to DC. 
Additionally, I've always been drawn to the DC movies. My parents and I have gone to see many DC movies, such as the classic Superman and Batman films of the 1980s. And I remember watching the Wonder Woman TV show from the 1970s. DC just strikes a deeper chord with me. Throughout all the comic book stories, I have found DC characters to be more relatable and more fleshed out. I am also a big fan of the DC animated movie universe. I bought almost all of these comics at Osco in White Oaks Mall in Springfield, Illinois. Osco is no longer there, but the mall is still in operation and doing great. At Osco, they sold comics on the regular newsstand shelf and also on a revolving comic book rack. I attended only one comic show in my youth, at a Holiday Inn here in Springfield, now known as the Route 66 Hotel and Conference Center, and they still hold comic book shows there today. My favorite comic book artist is Jim Lee. I met Jim Lee while I was living in Los Angeles during a chance encounter at my former employer, USC. I walked him and his family from the parking garage to the check-in table for an event there. I've mostly gotten back into comics in the past year. A big catalyst for my doing so was the Wonder Woman movie released in May 2017. That movie is directed by Patty Jenkins and stars Gal Gadot, and is my favorite movie. It inspired me to become more interactive and more vocal towards public personalities through my use of social media. One of the actors from that movie, Eugene Braverock, who plays the character Chief, has retweeted me on Twitter, and he and I speak on Twitter occasionally. Today, I read most comics digitally, but for collecting, I still do that in person. And when it comes to digital comics, I want to point out the importance of the public library system. I lived in LA for 11 years, and I learned to use multiple library systems there, including the USC Library, the Los Angeles City Library, and the LA County Library System. Through these libraries, I have been able to gain access to digital services such as Hoopla. This video is not sponsored by Hoopla, but Hoopla is a service that I use quite frequently. You can gain access through your library account and you can read comics from all the major publishers. You can read all the major titles from DC, Marvel, Image, Valiant, and IDW. It works just like checking something out from the library. You get the book for a certain amount of time, you can read it when you want, and at the end of the loan period, it's returned. At the end of this video, we'll talk more about what I've been reading lately. Okay, so let's get to it. My comic book collection. Okay, let's get things started. And first I want to set things off by looking at this. And this is my Wonder Woman 35. Terry Dodson variant cover signed by Gal Gadot. And we talk about prize possessions. People talk about prize possessions. I only bring this out every once in a while. Um, I get kind of emotional when I see it because it's very special. And this is kind of my prize possession. Uh, it's my only graded comic. Uh, it's graded by CGC. And it's the Yellow Label Signature Series. It's graded at the uh, coveted 9.8, 10 being perfect. There's a hologram. And I wish I had an exciting story about this. Uh, but the truth is, I just purchased it off of eBay. And um, it was a buy it now. And I won't say how much I paid for it 
But if you go to eBay and search Gal Gadot CGC Signature Series, you'll see the prices. Um, and this was actually significantly lower than the prices on there. And I don't know why that is. I think I just lucked out at the time when I searched. And sometimes eBay is just like that. Gal Gadot is my favorite actress. And I purchased this because it is CGC Signature Series. And the way that CGC does it, they won't even put the yellow label on the case unless one of their employees witnesses the actual signing, the act of the signing. Uh, CGC stands for Certified Guarantee Company, and CGC does not only verify the signature, but the actual act of signing the item. So um, the signing was witnessed by CGC, which is the only way to earn the yellow label. And this was signed on October 6th, 2017, which is the day, uh, it would have been New York City Comic, Comic Con, and this was the day before Gal Gadot hosted Saturday Night Live. And I, was, I would imagine that she was in town to rehearse for the show, um, and she probably stopped by New York Comic Con to, to sign. Um, on the Friday. But I remember watching that SNL episode that she hosted. I watched it live and I loved it. I was uh, nervous for her uh, because it was a big time for her. Um, so for her to sign this copy during that week in New York, the day before she hosted SNL, that is significant to me as a fan. So there has the date uh, right there. And this was signed by her during a significant point in her career. So it's not just a Gal Gadot signature, it's not just a verified signature, it's a signature from her on October 6, 2017 in New York, while she was there to host SNL. And as far as a signature, this is a strong and clean version of her signature. I've seen her signature on other copies of this same book, and my copy here has great symmetry. Uh, thanks to these comic book conventions, um, Gal Gadot has signed quite a bit. So I absolutely love it, and I hope to own it for the rest of my life. Uh, other reasons I like this item um, is that uh, Batman is on the cover, right there. So you've got Batman and other members of the Justice League. And also, this costume is the costume that is worn in the Wonder Woman films. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and look up this verification number and this might be kind of a mundane act to some of you out there, but to me this is a lot of fun. And uh, we're going to use this number right here. And I have CGC's website here. So this is the website for CGC, and I'm going to go here. The form for verification is right there. And there we have it. So as you can see right there, uh, this is the number entered, and it is the Wonder Woman 35. Uh, it looks like this uh, particular comic was graded uh, in April 2018. And uh, it's got the Terry Dodson cover, and it's got the signature signed by Gal Gadot on October 6, 2017. So there it is, the full verification and the full package. And I love that they do this. Um, I think it's... One of the great um, benefits of technology in the collectibles space is that we can really have these verification um, systems such that with um, 
a system online that everyone can access and your verification number, it leaves no doubt as to what uh, you've got. So that's very cool. All right, we're going to keep things going. I've got my comic book boxes here. And these boxes are separated by publisher. So I have a DC box and a Marvel box. And we're going to take a look at the DC box first. Okay, so for the DC box, we're going to go through these uh, comics categorized by superhero. And uh, we're going to go through Batman, Superman, and Wonder Woman, otherwise known as the DC Trinity. Um, this is the first comic that I purchased on my own, Detective 610. And as I said in the intro, my friend Byron Jones gave me some comics to start off, but this is the first pur purchase I made on my own at OSCO in White Oaks Mall here in Springfield, Illinois. And um, this is the newsstand variant. It's not a hard issue to find. Detective 611. Penguin cover. Pretty cool. Newsstand as well. So since I purchased all of these at OSCO during that era, it was a newsstand. So these are going to be new stands. Detective 612. Detective 613. Detective 614. Detective 616. Detective 617. And this is a Joker cover. Very cool. Detective 618. Detective 619. Detective 620 Detective 621 Newsstand Detective 622 Detective 626, and um, I love this cover. There's nothing special about this issue, but uh, it's fresh. Detective 628. Detective 629 and uh, that's it for the de detective comics and uh, this is where we get into the Batman so this is uh, Batman 354 Batman 457, and this is the first Tim Drake as Robin, where Batman acknowledges him as Robin. Uh, this is not the error print, so um, this is probably a copy that would go for about 15 bucks. Batman 462, this story is really dope. Uh, he goes to the Bay, San Francisco. 
that's a good uh, read. Good story. Batman 465. Batman 485. Batman Annual 15, and this is a uh, part of the story arc Armageddon 2001, which was uh, um, a story arc happening during the time I was collecting in the 90s. Uh, Robin 3 of 5. Robin 4 of 5. And Robin 5 of 5. Robin 2, number 2, Joker cover. When Tim Drake uh, took over the Robin mantle, uh, they made, they put out a lot of Robin. Uh, so we, then we get into Batman Legends of the, the Dark Knight. Now, this is a title that has always, well, I've always seen this sell for less, but I don't know why, because these are good comics. Um, the quality is really, really great. Um, but anyway, there's this one, number 14. Number 15 and 16. So you can find these for relatively cheaper than the other um, Batman titles, but I think they're I think they're quality. Um, Batman Shadow of the Bat number one, and this is a key issue. So that's a purchase from Osco. Uh, this is my favorite comic. <laughs> Action Comics 1 reprint. Uh, uh, pardon me. Action Comics 1 reprint 1991. So, um, Action Comics 1, the real Action 1, is worth mil millions of dollars. But um, the comic was reprinted a couple times in the 80s and 90s to stoke excitement for Superman and for collecting. And so I remember uh, purchasing this in 1991 at Osco, paying the 50 cents. And uh, it's, uh, it presents very beautifully. Uh, the back is also very nice. I don't like to handle my comics more than I need to, so I won't take this out. But yeah, this is Action 1, reprint, 1991. Uh, Superman 45. Superman 46. Western. Stare down. That's cool. <clears throat> then we get into this uh, three-part series, Dark Knight over Metropolis. So, um, these are not hard to find or not very valuable, but uh, they're cool to me because they're um, Batman, Superman kind of team-ups. So here we are with uh, Superman 44, Adventures of Superman 467, and action 654. So this would be the Dark Knight over Metropolis um, series there. I always thought that was kind of cool. Adventures of Superman um, 465 where uh, they made a departure from his traditional suit for a while in the 90s. And uh, this is actually a key, sh a key issue. Uh, there's a minor character introduced here. Uh, Superman Annual 3. This goes along with the Armageddon 2001 story arc. Uh, we have another series here. The Soul Search series. So um, this would be Action 656. And then Superman 47. And then the Adventures of Superman 470, where we have the Soul Search uh, story arc. Action 649, and this is a Brainiac cover. Action 660, Lex Luthor cover. 
Superman the Man of Steel 1, Armageddon 2001 1, Armageddon 2001 2, Action Comics Annual 1991 3, and then we get into the Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman uh, 252, Wonder Woman 270, fresh cover. Uh, this is a three-part series, Wonder Woman 291. Uh, 292 and 293 and one of my favorite covers Wonder Woman 300 fresh got the uh, jet Got JL, Justice League. So, a serious business. And um, one of my favorite issues that I own Wonder Woman Volume 2, number one. So, this is number one um, <clears throat> George Perez cover, and this kind of set things off for what is known as the definitive kind of um, version of Wonder Woman that is told in, in the cinema and what we have today. And on the back, I have the pre-printed autograph from Linda Carter. And you can get one of these if you uh, request, uh, make a request through a form on Linda Carter's website. So uh, I put it here, and I think it serves as a nice backing to the Wonder Woman 1. So shout out to Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. Another special issue, Wonder Woman 7, and the significance of this is it's the first appearance um, of Cheetah in the modern era. And Cheetah is the villain in the... 1984 movie, Wonder Woman 1984 movie. Wonder Woman 13. Uh, Wonder Woman 13 newsstand. Wonder Woman 19. Wonder Woman 47 Wonder Woman 48 Wonder Woman 67 Wonder Woman 85, love that cover. You can just feel them crashing through the glass. Wonder Woman 103. Uh, this is uh, Rebirth, so we're on Wonder Woman Volume 5 now, but this is Wonder Woman Volume 5, 7. Jenny Frizen is a <clears throat> favorite artist of mine. Uh, she's from Illinois, so shouts to Jenny Frizen. This is one of her covers. Very nice. All of her covers are very nice, which is why I picked them up. Uh, Wonder Woman 8, Rebirth 8, Jenny Frizen. Wonder Woman 11, Jenny Frizen. Wonder Woman 36, Jenny Frizen. And then we get into the Wonder Woman Justice League Dark uh, Witching Hour 
variants. So I love what DC is doing with these variants, and this is a Jenny Frizen cover as well. So this is Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman 56, and then Wonder Woman 57, which is also a Jenny Frizen. So, um, yeah, she's, she's snapping off pretty hard on these. So shouts to Jenny Frizen, uh, representing Illinois, and she's a Chicagoan. Awesome. Just awesomeness. And then uh, this is the uh, Ricardo Federici variant of Justice League Dark and Wonder Woman. So these uh, comprise a story arc called The Witching Hour involving Justice League Dark and Wonder Woman. And I read The Witching Hour and the story is great and everything, but it's really all about these covers. I mean, this one in particular, just take a look at that. I mean, whew. next level, if you ask me. All these, these are my favorite, some of my favorite covers. Witching Hour. Uh, Wonder Woman 62, Scalera variant. Wonder Woman 63, Shirahama variant. And since it's a DC comic, I have a copy of Star Trek, The Next Generation. So this would be uh, from the 90s, number four, I guess. But it's a DC comic. And that is the box of DC. Okay, now we're going to get into the Marvel box. And the first thing I'd like to show is the actual box itself. So this is art um, taken from Jim Lee's X-Men number one, um, X-Men volume two, number one. So as you can see, we have um, Magneto on the side and then uh, Wolverine and Cyclops kind of leading the charge. I mean, this is a very famous wraparound cover, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen this, but <laughs> on the box it's, it's very nice. And this one even has the price and date of the comic. So you've got the rest of the team, Gambit, um, Colossus, Rogue, Psylocke, and the lid depicts the same scene. So that's the box, and yeah, it serves its purpose very well, while looking very very nice, very true to the aesthetic. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into it. The Marvel box. Uh, these are the comics that I mentioned in the intro that my friend Byron gave me. So this is New Mutants 56. New Mutants 57. New Mutants 58. New Mutants 60. New Mutants 61. And a very important issue, New Mutants Annual Number 2. And this is the first appearance of Psylocke. So, um, the story with this is that um, the New Mutants go to another dimension called Mojo World. And when they're taken over there, uh, the character is um, still Betsy Braddock, who is um, a well-established character in the Marvel Universe. And when they're over there, the leader of Mojo World, Mojo, 
captures Betsy Braddock and uh, later calls her Psylocke. So that is um, the story. And so Byron, if you're out there uh, listening, I have the New Mutants Annual number 2 newsstand first appearance of Psylocke. Thank you. And with that we have X-Force number 1. So I read that this is the second best-selling comic of all time, and this is my sealed copy. Uh, there is a trading card on the back, and the valuable card is the Deadpool card, and this is not um, the, the that is not the card in here. Uh, this has the Cable trading card. But there's my X Force One sealed, and I also have X Force One gold, um, so that I could read it. Uh, that's a nice copy, too. And X-Force 2, this is a key issue because it's the first, uh, pardon me, second, this is the second, second appearance of Deadpool. Um, and this is a comic I purchased at the Route 66 um, Hotel and Conference Center back in the day. And uh, you can see I paid $4 for it. But uh, nowadays, this issue would be worth about, I don't know, 20 Um... So I'm a fan of Deadpool, but I'm more of a fan of his uh, incarnation in the comics. I feel that um, I enjoyed the first Deadpool movie. I did not like the second Deadpool movie. And my major gripe is that in the comics, Deadpool is, is depicted as a spry. Um, very spry, very agile assassin. A killer. And it's not like he's not in the films. It's just I think they put the comedy um, kind of front and center more so than the athleticism. But in the comics, um, Deadpool is depicted as, you know, very fast moving and, you know, silent killer. Anyway, there's uh, X-Force 3, X-Force 4, which is a sideways issue featuring Spider-Man. X-Force 5, X-Force 6, X-Force 7, X-Force 8, X-Force 9, X-Force 10, X-Force 11, first appearance of Domino. Um, she pops up in earlier issues, but I guess that was a clone. This is widely accepted as Domino's first appearance. I love the cover. Uh, X-Force 12. X-Force 13. X-Force 14. X-Force 15, another key issue, Deadpool cover. And I like, uh, I do like the first Deadpool movie, but I don't like Deadpool 2. And um, that's for the reasons I've just mentioned. And also the depiction of Cable, I think, is off too. And I think Josh Brolin is a great actor, but Cable is large. See, Cable is, in the comics, Cable is really, really large. Okay, he's large compared to Deadpool, he's just big. And they try to do uh, the character justice, um, but I don't think they get there in the movies. And I really did not like Deadpool 2. But that's just my opinion. And I know it was commercially successful. X-Force 16 sealed. X-Force 16 opened. X-Force... Annual 1, Shadow Shot Part 4. That's another thing I didn't like about the Deadpool 2 movie. I didn't like how they killed off Shatterstar. Shatterstar is a strong character. Um, X-Force joins Spider-Man, so this would be um, Spider-Man 16. This is a Todd McFarlane um, cover. Also, he's the writer and artist on this one. And it's a sideways issue. So, that reads sideways as well. 
And then we get into uh, my ASMs. So this is Amazing Spider-Man 138. Amazing Spider-Man 343. Amazing Spider-Man 6, uh, pardon me, 346. Um, yeah, Venom cover. Fresh. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man 389. Web of Spider-Man, 72. Deadly Foes of Spider-Man, 1. Spider-Man, 2099, number 1. Foil. Uh, Amazing Spider-Man, Riot at Robot World. What if the Amazing Spider-Man had married the Black Cat? What if the Marvel superheroes had lost Atlantic's attacks? Uh, this is uh, the start of the X-Men. Um, Uncanny X-Men 248. This is the first X-Men Jim Lee cover. And even though it's got a really bad spine roll here, um, I picked this up just to have the first Jim Lee X-Men. And this is my favorite Jim Lee X-Men. I purchased this at Osco back in the day. And this is, um, well, as you can see, it features Wolverine and Professor X. And, um, yeah, it just uh, really caught my eye back in the day. But this is one of, one of the definitive Jim Lee X-Men covers. Um, so I'm happy to have this. Presents really nicely. Uncanny X-Men. Um, I don't know what number this is. 318? Yeah. And there's a Jubilee leaving. X-Men Volume 2 Number 1. So this is um, Jim Lee. And um, I think this is the other best-selling comic of all time. Um, X-Men Volume 2 Number 3. <laughs> the Real Ghostbusters Number 1. Uh, Ghostface Killer 12 Reasons to Die comic. This came with the CD that I purchased. Marvel Comics Dark Man Number 1. Pardon me, Number 2. Dark Man 2. And then we get into some Impact Comics. Legend of the Shield. The Comet. And then we get into my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Now these are the ones printed by Archie Adventure Series. Um, but I had a lot of fun reading these. So this is uh, number three. Archie's Adventure Series. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Number nine. And number ten. So... Number 12. And then speaking of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, for free comic book day just this year, I picked up um, this one. This Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles free comic book day. And also for free comic book day, I picked up this um, Stranger Things issue. And I love the Stranger Things Netflix show. And this has the uh, a Black Hammer story as well. So that's put out by Dark Horse. Uh, cool cover. And yeah, there's a small, short, Stranger Things story there. And these are also from Free Comic Book Day. This is uh, Star Wars Adventures and then uh, Star Wars Free Previews from Free Comic Book Day. But all in all, that concludes the Marvel box. As far as comics that I've been reading lately, I've been reading Batman, more of the recent Batman titles, starting from when Scott Snyder took on writing duties onwards. I really like what's been going on with DC Rebirth and Dark Knight's Metal. I've been reading Lazarus, and I've been reading Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Volume 1, Change is Constant, the 2012 reboot 
with the new origin story. And to wrap up today's episode, I'd like to read an excerpt from Mark Twain's The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. Tom's whole being applauded this idea. It was deep and dark and awful. The hour, the circumstances, the surroundings were in keeping with it. He picked up a clean pine shingle that lay in the moonlight, took a little fragment of red keel out of his pocket, got the moon on his work, and painfully scrawled these lines, emphasizing each slow downstroke by clamping his tongue between his teeth and letting up the pressure on the upstrokes. Huck Finn and Tom Sawyer swears they will keep mum about this, and they wish they may drop down dead in their tracks if they ever tell and rot.